Christ and Stanton United Methodist Churches. It is good to be with you as we worship our Lord together. As a reminder, our churches are gathering once again for in-house worship services. The Christ Church worships at 9 a.m. and the Stanton Church worships at 1015. We do continue to follow COVID-19 protocols, uh, mask wearing, hand sanitizing, social distancing, and so on as best we can. We do welcome you to join us in person if you feel comfortable doing so. Our first scripture reading today uh, comes to us from the Psalms. It is Psalm 25 verses 8 through 10 which says this, Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right, and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. Our second scripture reading comes to us from the Gospel of Mark. It is Mark chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. Then he began to teach them, that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. My friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let us pray. Holy Lord, we thank you for your patience 
and your grace this day. We thank you for your continued love and guidance in our lives. Open our hearts, open our ears to hear the message that you have for us this holy day. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. So, greetings once again to all of you. It's not really scriptural per se, but I have this mental picture of the disciples. Now, it's, um, it's several years after Jesus' death and resurrection. The disciples are together in, in some room. They're, they're talking about the good old days, laughing and teasing and reminiscing the way friends who have shared a life-changing experience often do. Then one of them looks at Peter and says, Hey, Satan, tell us about the day you rebuked Jesus. And another joins in. Yeah, how did that work out for you? And yet another, what were you thinking, Peter? But then Peter begins to speak. You know, I just didn't like the whole suffering and dying thing. I didn't get it. That's not what I signed up for. That's not who I thought the Messiah would be. The others become quiet. They recall that day like it was yesterday. And they begin to realize that Peter didn't say anything that they weren't thinking to. Now, maybe Peter didn't say anything we haven't thought or even wanted to say ourselves. Jesus has a very different understanding of discipleship than what most of us probably want. When another's reality and vision begin to conflict with and overtake our own, we oftentimes rebuke. We take them aside to enlighten them, to help them understand, to show them the error of their ways. That's all Peter was trying to do. If we are really honest, haven't we at some point disagreed with Jesus, wondered about Jesus, asking why he doesn't do what we want? Why won't he see the world our way? It all seems so clear to us, doesn't it? If he can cast out the demons and silence the, the crazy guy in the synagogue, then he can silence the voices that drive us crazy right? If he can heal Peter's mother-in-law, why not those we love? If he can cleanse the leper, why does our life sometimes leave us feeling unclean and isolated? If he can make the paralytic walk, why are there so many crippled by fear, dementia, or addiction even today? If he can calm the sea, then he should be able to calm the storms of our world. And yet they rage on. Things like violence and war and poverty. If he can feed 5,000 with a few fish and pieces of bread, why do so much of our world go to bed hungry every day? Now, I have wondered about these things. I have been asked about these kinds of questions. I know some who have lost faith and left the church over these things. These are our rebukes of Jesus. He is not being or acting like we want, right? Sometimes his words challenge and shock us, and maybe we're not so different from Peter. Just a few verses back uh, before today's gospel reading, Jesus asked this question, who do you say that I am? And Peter names him as the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one of God. Jesus is the one of whom the prophets spoke, the one for who Israel has waited, the one who was supposed to restore God's people. Peter is right, and yet he also does not understand. 
You see, Peter has an image of what the Messiah is supposed to do and who the Messiah is supposed to be. We all have our own images and wishes about who Jesus is and what he should do. All is well when Jesus is casting out demons, when he's healing the sick or preventing death, when he's feeding the multitudes. We like that Jesus. We want to follow that Jesus. He is our Lord and Savior. Jesus will not, however, conform to our images of who we think he is or who we want him to be. Instead, he asks us to conform to who he knows himself to be, the one who must undergo great suffering, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, to be killed, and after three days rise again. He sets a choice before us. It's a choice that we have to make. Again and again, the circumstances of life set that choice before us. We either choose ourselves and deny Jesus, or we deny ourselves and choose Jesus. If any want to become my followers, he says, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Self-denial is the beginning of discipleship. Now, I suspect that is not what Peter had in mind when Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. I wonder if that is what we had in mind when we came to worship today, or what we think about when our baby is baptized, or how often we understand and practice our faith as daily self-denial. Now, to be sure, Jesus' words are hard, and his way is extreme. Faith in Jesus, Peter is learning, is not about the elimination of risks, the preservation of life, and the ability to control. Instead, Jesus asks us to risk it all, abandon our lives, and relinquish control to God. That is what Jesus is doing, and he expects nothing less of those who would follow him. The way of Christ reminds us that our life is not our own. It belongs to God. It reminds us that we are not in control. God is. Our life is not about us. It's about God. As long as we believe our life is about us, we will continue to exercise power over others, try to save ourselves, control our circumstances, and maybe even rebuke Jesus. Jesus rarely exercised power over others or tried to control circumstances. He simply made different choices. Jesus chose to give in a world that takes. He chose to love in a world that hates, to heal in a world that injures, to give life in a world that kills. He offered mercy when others sought vengeance, forgiveness when others condemned, and compassion when others were indifferent. He trusted God's abundance when others said there was not enough. And with each choice, he denied himself and showed others that God was present. At some point, those kinds of choices will catch the attention of those who live and profit by power, control, and looking out for number one. They will not deny themselves. They will respond. Jesus said they would. He knew that he would be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes. This is what happens to those who choose the path of self-denial. When it happened for Jesus, when he chose that path, he did, though, make one last choice. He chose resurrection over survival. If any want to become my followers, you must deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me, Jesus said. People throughout the ages, from Jesus' day to today, 
have wondered about who Jesus was, what he was doing, why he was doing what he was doing, and what he was calling them then and calling us today to do. Have we wondered the same? May our Lord hear our questions and then help us to hear his answers. Let us pray. Holy Lord, I don't think Peter really knew what he was doing when he rebuked the Lord, except maybe to say that he was watching out for Jesus. But Jesus knew what was going on. Jesus knew that what was happening had to happen. And he tried to help Peter understand. Lord, we wonder too about you, about your call for us. We wonder about our purpose in this world. What are we supposed to do? You call to us daily. You call to us to hear your voice. You call to us to do your will. Lord, as we continue in this Lenten journey, we hear your voice. And we ask that you help to prepare our hearts, to renew our hearts, that we can hear your call and answer your call. Oh Lord, bless us, be with us, love us, and continue to call our names. Lord, all of this we ask in your holy and precious name. Amen. Peace during this Lenten season. Amen.